The Sun Nam Art Collection, which was founded in 1965, contains some 2,000 items, which covers a century of South African art history. What you see here is actually just a small portion of the collection as such. A large part of it's on exhibition in office spaces, as well as in our own gallery at the Sun Nam Head Office. We continue to acquire works for the collection and in such keep it relevant to the current state of affairs of this country. You know, whenever I walk through an art gallery, I'm always in awe about the beauty of the work. At Sunland Private Wealth, I think we always try to ask the question, what does provide the value to these wonderful art pieces? As you stroll through this collection and see the works face to face, what looks back at you really isn't a price tag. You get a real tangible sense of the cultural wealth of our nation. And when you think of it in those terms, then this collection truly becomes priceless. What perhaps guides and inspires artists to create cultural wealth is very similar to what would guide and inspires wealth managers when they create portfolios for clients. In fact, if I may quote US hedge fund manager James Altucher, he said to create something unique and beautiful that lasts and is meaningful is really hard. For it to be truly special, it cannot happen fast. And that is true for investments, and it's certainly true for art. With that spirit in mind, we've begun a new, unique project. With Stefan's guidance, we've chosen a single work from the Sunam collection, and then we approached upcoming artists and craftsmen uh, and asked them to, to re-explore the artist's original work using their own experience and skills to create a brand new work of their own, and we call this project. This work, acquired by Sunnam in 2010, is by the Cape Town artist Ndi Nkwinambi. It is entitled Walk of Numbers. My work has often an express journey. With the Walk of Numbers, a central image with figures just across the canvas. And then I thought about the journey when I actually put the ruler as a sort of part. Maybe it was uh, measuring my progress, how far I've come and how far I still need to go. I don't think art is ever finished. There is um, always room to grow more and, and learn more. That's what life and art is all about. Again and again, always a voyage of discovery. It will be interesting to find out how Michael will translate my work. A lot of my work is about reinterpreting the past, uh, mostly by artists who are no longer here. They died centuries ago. So the thing with this new project, it's quite a challenge reinterpreting the work of someone who's alive, who will see it, who will have a response to it. And so I really want to make sure I do it properly so that they feel good with it, as well as the fact that I want to add some of my own to it. So for this work, I decided to kind of echo the idea that it's this wonderful journey that you go along. I want the viewer to physically go along that journey too. The work will be 600 centimetres in length um, by a nice, neat 30 centimetres high. When I look at Ndikumbule's work, I think there are certain similarities um, in as much as if you look at his work, there's been a lot of time and labour that's been invested into the piece. Similarly with mine, six metres of fine illustration, it's a lot of work, a lot of going over repeating those figures again and again. And I think if you look at those two together, those, those similarities are quite obvious. What makes this project really unique is that Nkumbule's work ended and I don't think he envisioned that there would be some kind of continuity from this. I'm really picking up where he left off as I continue my journey. Wogot Numbers was created in 2009 and it's been quite an interesting journey since then. So I'm quite uh, humbled by Michael's translation of the work, which is quite detailed. It was really quite humbling to see how touched he was by the work that I did. You know, growing up, I've known Indian Kabulis work for a while and seen it in the National Gallery and on other shows. So to get that kind of acclaim from someone, is actually really special for me. It's quite nice to see his perspective from behind that window. It wasn't just the figures that I drew that went on this journey, but I went on one myself. 
And it was also really interesting seeing the kind of things that came out in the actual artwork. Ultimately, as you get closer towards the end, these things start revealing themselves that you didn't think were possible, which I think is also part of that journey. There's ups and downs, and again and again, the journey continues. The journey we began with artist Michael Chandler continues with two more South African creators. Both have reinterpreted Hinde Kambule's original work in their own, very different ways. The multi-talented René Rousseau, whose work includes textile, ceramic and interior design, has created a bold graphic liner cut print, while Johannesburg architect and designer Sean Gaylard's minutely detailed work in ink explores his fascination with the pattern and fabric of cities. Look out for these artists' work in our brochures and other materials, and for the work of new artists as we select more masterpieces from the Sunnam collection to re-explore. Join us in this unique project. Not only will it add to the cultural wealth of our nation, but it also reflects our own dedication to inspiration and excellence in perpetuity as we craft lasting financial wealth for our clients.